Neil Before Blog presents Neil Before Pod. Hello, and welcome to the Neil Before Pod interview segment. I'm your host, Craig, and recently I had the pleasure of talking to Batman and Superman Battle of the Super Sons director, Matt Peters. We talk love of the Richard Donner movies, playing in the superhero sandbox, and fitting the Bat Cow into the film. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hi, Matt. How's it going? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. An obvious question to start with, what attracted you to doing this particular project? Well, first off, honestly, I really love the script that Jeremy had wrote, and he worked really hard with Rick on it, and I love working with Rick. So that was like a given, is both those guys are just a blast to be on projects with. But honestly, it was because it's Superman, and I happen to be the world's biggest Superman fan that I know of, so I just wanted to get my hands on that character again. <laughs> yeah, that definitely came across in the loving homages to earlier Superman works, particularly in the opening of the film, and even with some of the stuff Jonathan experiences as well, those little touches of nostalgia, I suppose. Oh yeah, definitely. Rick and Jeremy and I are all fans of the uh, Donner film, so there was definitely a feeling of we wanted to capture the spirit of that and definitely the energy of that movie. You have lots of experience as a storyboard artist. Do you find that's the perfect way to transition into directing an animated feature to visualise everything that plays out? Oh yeah, definitely. I think it's arguably essential. You really want to be able to tell your story. you got to be able to convey that information to your board artists and sometimes I'll end up having to draw out some stuff for them and other times it'll be a situation where the board artist will be gone but we'll end up in edits coming up with a change and then I have to turn around and make that change so it goes hand in hand with making the movies of Warner Brothers so yeah, I think uh, having a board experience definitely made me a better director and it made me a better board artist too. I know you've directed a number of animated features for DC as well. How was the changeover from storyboard artist to directing? What challenges did you find came into play once you switched hats, so to speak? Well, obviously, working as a board artist, I worked with directors, so I kind of knew a little bit about what the job entailed. And mostly it was just a matter of just getting over my own self-doubt and my own nerves about whether or not I could do it. It's a little bit more than just storyboarding. You also deal with time management and getting the crew to see things the same way you are. But it was a challenge that I really liked. I ended up really getting drawn to it. It's uh, something I really enjoy doing. But I also enjoy flipping back to a board artist from time to time, too. So it's kind of a fun thing to be able to shift gears like that. So were you really hands-on in the storyboard process for this film as well to help visualize how it was all going to come together? Yeah, you're always giving notes, so it's kind of hard to be a director without getting involved in the storyboards in this process, and that's where I like to put a lot of my energy in things. Rick is really fantastic with storyboard as well, but he's also really fantastic with design, so he'll be able to be that creative leader to the design department and can really make for some fantastic designs, which in this case is why I think the movie looked so good. Yeah, it looks stunning. It's beautifully animated. I really like the way it all comes together. I imagine a big part of the change to directing when you would have done that over the various films that you've done is handling the actors and helping them see what you see or what the audience will see later on. How do you go about communicating that and getting them in the moment, so to speak? Well, Wes Gleason is our voice director, so he does a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to getting the performances from the actors that we are looking for. Wes has great rapport with them. He has a great ability to speak to them. Rick and I are both present for the records, but we're there to make sure that it's staying in spirit to the script. Uh, you'd be surprised how often somebody says, look out, and it's like, that's not the delivery that we're looking for. <laughs> and you have to kind of explain that you want it to be more of a excited lookout as opposed to a terrified one or something. So yeah, Rick and I will chime in on that. But Wes does primarily a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to the acting. And I'm always happy to be working with Wes. He's a great guy. I've spoken to a number of voice actors who talk about the trials of being told to deliver a hundred grunts or whatever it is to be chosen from at a later point. Yeah, it's a huge collaborative process to make a movie and stuff. The most fun I think for me is, is when you get to work with people who you actually enjoy spending time with who are really professional and can also just be a, a relaxing environment. Honestly, everyone on this crew, when you read the list, it's all those people. I couldn't ask for a, a more happier job to have than working on this movie. You said you were present for the recording sessions. I imagine it must have been quite an experience seeing the heavy hitters like Laura Bailey, Troy Baker and Nolan North just do their stuff because they're the big names in animation and video games and things. Oh yeah, they're fantastic. They're super entertaining people and they always have a wonderful story of something that just happened to them right before they come to the record or they just have a great sense of humor. My favorite thing is uh, we don't get it that often, but it's always fantastic when we get the actors in the booth at the same time. And they sit there and they start improvising their characters right in front of each other because they're playing off one another. It's really great for them to be in the booth at the same time. But it ends up becoming a real hilarious thing to watch because you feel like you're at a cocktail party with Batman and Superman and they're just talking <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> 
with Batman and Superman in terms of the way these characters are handled, it must be so easy to slip into almost parody because there's so many well-known traits with these characters. And I noticed this film covers a lot of them. All the weird stuff that Batman has in the Batcave and even Crypto the Superdog, which could be ridiculous if handled incorrectly. So it's the wealth of material that exists associated with these characters to choose from. Oh yeah, definitely. The fact that we were able to sneak in the bat cow is, I think, one of my favorite <laughs> little things about this movie. But the, it's funny, as you're, like you're saying, it, it could easily veer in a parody or becoming a lampoon of the character, which is something that I think none of us really ever wanted to do. We don't want to make fun of these characters. We want to have fun with them. And I think it's important that the audience know that it's done with respect and love and never at the character's expense. Even when I was working on Lego movies, which was arguably more comical, we never made fun of the characters. We never tried to make it that they were parodies or lampoons. We actually made them the Lego versions of those characters. So that was important to us to make sure that we're staying true to the characters that we're lucky enough to get to be custodians for while making movies. Yeah, there's a difference between laughing at the characters or laughing at the audience and laughing with them. Exactly. And I think this film captures that balance really well because, yeah, they are comic book characters, so it's good to play with the more outlandish aspects of them and acknowledge them and celebrate them as well. Yeah, thank you. I think that we did a good job. Jeremy and Rick and I are all fans of the Donner film, and we're also fans of Batman. At no point did we ever try to make this some kind of lampoon or something that we were going to poke fun at. I think there's some seriously emotional moments that we've included in the movie as well. Things that really speak to the heart of the characters and their true emotions. We want these characters to feel like people and we want them to feel like the people that fans know. So that was something that I think all of us took very seriously when making this movie. Things like Superman being this absentee father because he's Superman and that kicking off the development of their relationship in a way. Yeah, exactly. That's a perfect place. It kind of is a thing for all of us to examine. It's one thing when you think of Superman as a hero and just doing his thing, but Superman as a parent is an entirely different thing, an entirely different structure that he'd have to deal with. And being an absent father sometimes would be part of that. So it was kind of great to address that emotion, see how the emotion would play to Jonathan, who would obviously feel hurt from that, but also the emotion with complication that would be felt for Superman, because what his job is very important, but but his son is just equally as important, if not more. Yeah. Last question. In terms of the animation process, was there any aspects of the film in particular that blew you away when you saw them fully rendered and voiced for the first time? God, honestly, I would have to say that when Rick was showing me the stuff early on, he was showing me the designs and seeing the rotation of the design was what just knocked me out of the park. It was something that Rick, I know, worked very hard on was making sure that these characters looked really fantastic. The CG animation, we had done CG before, so we knew the ins and outs of the stuff that's possible. But it was another thing altogether to actually make sure that it looked fantastic and to have that 2D render. So the design was definitely something that I know Rick spent a lot of time on really crafting, making sure that it was just right. The lighting is really fantastic to this. So I think it makes for a really unique experience and makes for a really fantastic looking animated film. Thanks very much for your time and for giving such great answers to the questions. Really great talking to you about this stuff. Yeah, thank you so much. That was my interview with director Matt Peters. All the best to him with the film and in the future. If you like what you heard, then please do hit subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your podcatcher of choice. Please do leave a rating and a comment as well. As always, we hope you'll join us next time on Kneel Before Pod.